Well, hello again, my Port Naz friends and YouTube and Facebook and whoever happens to be stumbling upon this man. My name is Pastor Chad. I get to share with you a bit of my heart and a bit of uh, what's kind of going on in the life of the church and the calendar of the church a little bit today. And that is we've just been removed a couple weeks now, a week and a half from this Resurrection Sunday, known more probably from you, from many of us, to that Easter Sunday morning, but that Resurrection Sunday morning. And I have a question for you today as we kind of go into today's uh, quick devotional thought, and it is this, how does that Resurrection Sunday change anything for you? How does that Resurrection Sunday, how does that Resurrection of Jesus change the way we live, change the way we think, Sometimes to get the answers to some of these questions, we look back and we look back into the scripture and we look back into what Jesus said, what he did, what he told his disciples. What did the disciples do? And how did this resurrection change them? Remember, after that Good Friday, the death of Jesus on that day on the cross, there's a lot of despair, a lot of unknown. Some begin to walk back to their homes. We see that, that, that one story caption of the walk to Emmaus and those walking back and others are downtrodden or saddened or wondering if they missed something. Remember Jesus told them what was going to happen and, and hopefully explain this idea of what they were to do but still we, we question we wonder. So we ask the idea of what what is Resurrection Sunday? What does the empty tomb do for your life? What does it shape and mold and shift and direct you toward? So there's two words I'm going to bring to you today, and that's this. Coming or going. Coming or going. And, and see, it was, it was never, uh, the church was never just meant to be about a place we come to. I, I, please don't get me wrong here and get me fired. I, the church is a great place to come. The church is a great place to come and pray and to worship and to be together and to learn and to fellowship and to play. If you know me, I love to play and to do so many things. So the church is a great place in a sense, to come. But that's the building we're kind of talking about. We, we phrase it as the church. Again, we are the church, but that church building even, or the location, is still a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a great spot to remind ourselves to come and to join with others. But, but being a follower of Christ and a church alone wasn't a place just to come to. And after Jesus' resurrection, we learn this even more, it was, it was always about um, the church was supposed to be and, and continue to be and was launched to be a place that was a sending place. Uh, from, from a, basically went from a temple, an area that the, the, the Pharisees and the Jewish people would come and they'd gather on the Sabbath and they would come to, it became a sending place. A place now that the church is a place you come to, to, to gather and then to be sent, not just a place to come and sit. And sometimes we can easily make our, our institutions, the church's institution, a place that just come and learn. But it is a sending place because we are all called to be missionaries. You see, prior to Jesus, every religious and spiritual, spiritual thing was centered about this people coming together. And in one simple day of this Easter, this Resurrection Sunday, uh, Jerusalem is no longer the destination, but the point of departure. It's not its destination to come to, but a place in which we now depart to go out. I'm going to get there in a second. You probably know what verse I might be coming to. You see, Easter challenges me. I want Easter to challenge you. I want this Resurrection Sunday to challenge us to think in a new way. To expect the world to come here and to join me and to just to, to put more things in the bulletins and more, more activities and events. And again, those aren't bad in and of themselves. My friends, we don't just put things on flyers and say, come. The church, the people are called to go. So coming or going, what is your calling? The vision that God gives the church is for the invitation and this idea of this coming to now be somewhat reversed, that now we come to scatter. And we come to, to go to our places and now we, we become the church in our workplace. We become the church in the home. We become the church in the school. My friends, if you're younger, you become the church on your basketball team. Or, or I, And I taught my sons this all the time. You use what God has given you, the gifts and the abilities God has given you as a platform to go and to share. Now again, we come. We want you to come. 
I'm not saying don't come. Come Sunday morning at 8.30. Come Sunday uh, morning at 11 a.m. Come Sunday online. However you want to come, come and be a part of us in the journey. But just don't forget that the coming is, is going to be a launching. It's not going to be, okay, next week you can go out and do your thing and hold off and be safe and, and shelter yourself and so you can come, come back. No, now all of a sudden, the coming place is now ascending, is a place of departure. And I want the fall of Christ, I want our people, I want Port Naz peeps to be sending peeps, to be people that are going out and showing God's grace and his love and his mercy and his peace wherever they are out, that they would take the church where they go, right? So from destination to departure, we are to be people of departure. We need you to come and grow, but we need you to come and grow to go. We need you to, to do that. Are you ready to do that? There's, a, there's an upside down kingdom that Jesus comes to, to bring, and we need to be a part of that. So here's a scripture verse for you today. It's the Great Commission. You might have figured it out, but Jesus now, he's, he's come, he's resurrected, and he gives his last great uh, word to his people and says this, all authority. This is in, uh, by the way, Matthew 28, if you want to follow along, verses uh, 18 through 20. It says, and all authority, heaven and on earth, has been given to me. Therefore, go. Therefore, go. Therefore, go. Go. Hear me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. I've been teaching you for a reason, that you'd go out. You'd go out and now bring them to me by being the church. I sh and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Funny little story as we end. There's a story I heard once of a little boy who got a model boat that he spent years, or not years, months putting together, gluing every piece just perfectly and finished this boat and put it on his mantle in his room and just loved looking at that boat. During that same time, his family had bought a boat that they began because they were so into boats. They began on Sundays or weekends or Saturdays or Fridays, whenever they'd get on the boat and take a family outing and go on the water and be on the boat. But then they became so busy and wrapped up in life that the boat began to sit and wasn't used and the barnacles began to get to the, the bottom of it. And by the time they got to the boat to get in it and to go out, they found the motor was broken and both boats kind of became mantelpieces. See, one boat was actually designed to kind of be put together and look and, 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 and kind of put up there. The other boat was designed to be in the water to go. You, my friend, me, my friend, were designed to go and to share and to be. God bless you today. Go in the name of the Lord, baptizing, preaching, teaching, exposing Jesus to all that will listen. God bless you today.